Hey guys, so today we're gonna to do a cycling q and I have a lot of questions regarding cycling, you know, whether it's beginners or just um, people who wanna pick up a new bike. I just have so many questions and I wanna to get to them. But first, real quick, I wanna say sorry about the delay on some of the uploads. A few videos ago, I mentioned that I was a bit sick. Just to let you guys know, I am feeling a lot better. Obviously that impacted it, as well as me being busy with some other things like school. Um, I'm getting ready to make a big transition to Florida. So thank you guys so much for your patience. Um, without further ado, let's get right into the questions. So I got this question through one of my cycling 101 videos and it says, I'm six foot three. What do you think of me using 180 millimeter cranks instead of 175s? Here's the thing. This topic is a topic that I think every avid cyclist goes crazy about some point or another. I know I did, I, I looked into it so much and there's definitely online resources out there. There's some information, different formulas that you can use to calculate which crank length is best for you. But honestly, this is a topic you go crazy about because there is not one <laughs> correct answer out there for it. So the best thing to do would be just to try out different cranks. Obviously that's a very costly thing to do because you have to buy it and then try it. Um, but if you have a friend that has different crank lengths and you want to borrow them or, you know, whatever situation, trying them out is going to be the best thing you can do. But even looking at the pros, you know, the pros will will vary. I mean, you take two riders that have the same height, <laughs> might have different crank length. Um, and there's many reasons for that. I think cyclists who come from a track background tend to go for shorter cranks just because they're easier to spin. and um, I guess uh, easier if you're a sprinter, if you're sprinter oriented. So a guy like Mark Cavendish, who is a, a really good sprinter on the road, he came from a track background. He used to be a track cyclist. So that's why he rides a very short crank length. Chris Froome and Marcel Kittle, who are over six feet, they should be around six foot three. They both ride 175 millimeter cranks. Now, doesn't mean that since you are six foot, you know, three or whatnot, and you're similar to these guys, that you should ride those cranks. I mean, you look at a guy like Nero Quintana, right? He's five foot six. He rides the same crank lengths as me. He rides a 172.5, and I am five foot nine, roughly. So, yeah, that's how much it varies. Now, um, the way I did it was, is I did some similar. I looked at riders of similar height to me, and I just picked 172.5, it's what most riders out there about my height ride. But I don't wanna say that's gonna be the solution for you. Obviously trying them out and testing them and getting the feel for it yourself is going to be the best thing to do. Why is a 3826 better than a 5034? If I had a 40 in the back with a 5034, would I still have a wide range? Can I still go fast on flats with a 3826? Or is there a three ring crank set you recommend. I'm looking for my first bike and I want a adventure road bike style, a road bike that can go off road and wanting to know the best gearing for the crank set. So a 3826 and a 5034, they're both pretty easy gears. They're both considered pretty easy. The triple crank, it's going to provide you more ratios, you know, more gears. Um, the thing is, it's going to weigh a little bit more than the double uh, crank so that's something to keep in mind if, if if you want to go as light as possible with your setup if you want to go fast on the road I say go with the 5034 over the 3826 the compact crank that the 5034 is going to allow you it's gonna be easy enough to spin up hills but also have a tough enough gear to go fast on flat roads so you don't want to be spinning out with that little gear with that 3826 so most adventure bikes, which sounds like something that you really want to pick up, come stock with a compact crank, a 5034. So I say go with that if you want to ride fast on, on the road. Um, but if you're just looking for an all-round bike and you just want really easy gears, and yeah, 3826 is definitely gonna allow you to spin your legs out. I want a bike to commute and exercise. I don't plan on racing. I don't want to spend over $300. I'm not sure what to get. I've looked at Trek, Diamond, Mongoose, Swin. Riding on mostly flat surfaces, maybe some dirt trails. So 
yeah, um, if you're riding on, on both the road and off-road, I definitely suggest going for an adventure bike or a hybrid bike as opposed to the two extremes being the road bike and a mountain bike. So I think an adventure or hybrid bike is is a good mix of both if you want to go off and on road. Next thing I would suggest is go for an aluminum frame over a carbon frame. It's going to be much cheaper and honestly the way they make aluminum bikes these days is, is really high quality stuff. Um, and you know you mentioned all those brands. Honestly you know find the brand that you like and if it's a top quality brand like Specialized Giant, Cannondale, Trek, like the ones you mentioned you know, then that's that's awesome. Just go with a bike that you can back up. And and normally, bikes that you see at the Tour de France, those types of brands, you know, that sponsor pro teams. You don't have to get the pro bikes, but I'm just saying, if you have a top quality brand that offers warranty and 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 support and all that stuff, that's that's what you want to go for, not just a Walmart bike that's gonna break on you. So um, definitely look around. I don't know if honestly there's any bikes made by quality brands that are around $300, you might find some for a little bit more. Like I've seen some adventure bikes and hybrid bikes that start around $500, but do your research, find a bike that you like and, and, and just go for it. I watched your vid about choosing your road bike. I wondered what you think about Merida. I'm looking at the Ride 300 where I live is a good mix of big climbs and nice flats as well. So yeah, I mean, if it's a brand that you like and if it's a bike that you like, uh, definitely, you know, I'm, I'm all for that. Um, test ride it, see what what uh, what your thoughts are about it before you buy it. Um, and also one more recommendation after doing just a quick research online. I know you mentioned the Ride 300. Look at even the 400 and consider it because it does have the 11 speed Shimano 105 group set, and that's gonna be a lot smoother than, than those older group sets. So just something to keep in mind, but test ride before you buy. I think that is the way to go. I'm five foot eight, bike shop recommends a 52 centimeter frame. I like a 49. So this one is, you know, it's tough to say, you know, you're this tall and you need this big of a frame because a 52 centimeter Colnago V1R is gonna fit a lot different than a 52 centimeter specialized tarmac. So different brands and different models are gonna vary. So you can't say that, oh, I ride a, uh, I ride a 52, so I'm just gonna go 52 in that brand and that model. So you can't do it like that. Um, I know different brands have their own uh, sizing and fitting charts. If you know the exact model that you want, you can go to their website, you know, look up that model, and then they'll give you like a, a size chart. So you say five foot eight, and they'll tell you exactly which frame size you need to buy. Uh, one thing to consider is that certain pros will ride a smaller frame. So in the example you gave me, you're five foot eight, right? Shop recommends you 52 centimeter frame, but you're looking at the 49 centimeter frame. That's the exact same thing that Mark Cavendish did. So Mark Cavendish is five foot eight. When he was on Edix Quickstep, he rode a 49 centimeter Venge. And that frame is too small according to specialized standards, but he, he put on a longer stem and he fitted that bike to his needs. So I'm not saying that you should do that. I'm just giving you an example of a pro that's that's done that before. And and you, you know you can you can fit a bike. Um, it's just gonna feel a little bit different. I recommend just going with what the brands recommend. But you know if you were to go with a smaller size frame, that's not very abnormal in the in the pro cycling world okay so pro cyclists will tend to do that but you just have to know what you're doing i'm 350 pounds and i was 385 before i want to take it to the next level by working out but i hate going to the gym so i thought i'd pick up a bicycle since i love riding bikes and i used to always ride them when i was young so it's a fun activity to do for fitness now i'm left trying to get a bike but i don't know what I am looking for because most bikes have a weight limit of 250 to 300 pounds. I get mixed feedback from bike experts, some telling me that mountain bikes with a double wall rim will suit me, or some will say you need a touring bike with a steel frame. I am 
super confused which one to get. Can you please guide me on the right bike? I want a bike for fitness and like the rolling feeling and going distances. Maybe I'll do some high intensity intervals once I ramp up on the bike. I need to know which one to look for. So yeah, each bike does have its weight limit. Um, same thing with rims. Definitely st stay away from carbon parts. They are a little bit more fragile. Um, plus they're expensive and you definitely don't need them as a beginner. But I'm guessing that is probably why they recommended a steel frame. But just in general, anyone who is overweight, who wants to lose weight through cycling, I would recommend a, a a frame that has thicker tubing with thicker tires that way you have more support definitely recommend going with something like that having a supportive bike that's going to allow you to get fitter to get more advanced into cycling and as you start to improve you know then later on down the road you can start thinking about more serious road bikes but the best thing to do would be to call up a brand's customer service line Tell them that you want to get into cycling and ask them about more information about the bikes that they offer. Cycling is such a great sport for weight loss, for improving your fitness, and just having overall fun and getting out of nature. So definitely don't give up on cycling. There's definitely options out there. Call up brands, ask them about information, and I'm sure they'd be happy to help you. So I've got two track fix gear bikes. I want to hit the road with some friends saving up for a proper road bike. Would you recommend me using my bikes for 40, 60 miles touring? So yeah, I mean, the thing with fixies are you, unless you're really skilled, I would not recommend taking them out on the road. Um, that's great that there are no hills that you don't really need other gears, but that's not the only thing that a road bike is more advantageous over a fixie. I mean, the thing is, a fixed gear bikes are dangerous out on the road, even on flat roads. So if you're coming to a stoplight, you know, and you can't stop in time, there's some guy that didn't even see the stop sign, blows right through, how are you gonna stop? You know, um, there's, I've seen all sorts of things out on the road. And so having brakes, <laughs> having brakes, it, it just increases your confidence so much more not to mention the safety aspect as well. I recommend just saving up for a road bike. You're gonna feel much more confident. You're gonna be able to have different gears. Um, you know, even on a sprint, you're gonna feel, uh, your mind's gonna be a lot more settled because you're gonna have those brakes in case you need to stop for whatever reason. So I know, yeah, uh, road bikes are definitely not cheap, um, but I would try to save as much as you can and, and invest in a road bike for the road and leave your fixie bikes for the velodrome. All right, so this is the last question I have here. And they're asking me, how tall are you? What size are you in the Nalini cycling kits? Just wanna buy one and I'm not sure what size I should wear because I think the recommended size will be a little bit too tight for me. I'm 178 centimeters and I'm quite lean. What size would you recommend for me? So lucky for you, I am about the same height as you. And I mean, I hope you would consider me pretty lean. Um, I wear a medium in the jerseys and bibs and I wear a large in the gloves and socks. So I personally like the kits to be as tight as possible, not restricting or anything like that, but I just don't want it flapping around as I'm cycling. I just like my clothes to sit, sit still. Uh, but if you want, uh, you know, your cycling kits to fit a little bit more snug, I just recommend, you know, buying one size larger. But remember, these kits are designed to be snug and, and to not flap around when you're cycling. So it improves aerodynamics. Um, it, you know, it's even when you're uh, shorts, you don't want them moving around because that's going to cause chafing and it's going to cause rashes and irritates your skin. So you want your clothes to sit where they're designed to sit. Um, but if, if you wanna go for one size larger, um, that, that's, that's cool too. All right guys, so I hope you enjoyed this cycling Q&A. If you have more questions, you know where to drop them down below. Or you can send them to me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, at Beniniac. Please, you know, if you want to keep the conversation going, by all means, please feel free to contact me. If you found this video useful, give it a like and subscribe down below for more videos on cycling as well as nutrition. Thank you guys for watching. As always, we'll see you in the next video.